there's a new ETF on the scene that has been capturing a lot of attention from investors, especially income investors, because it has been on an absolute monster of a bull run, returning over 115% in total returns in the past seven months, a company with an insane dividend yield of 37%. And this brings me to CONY, which is the Yieldmax Coin Option Income Strategy ETF. This is an ETF that uses a combination of options to indirectly invest in Coinbase stock and aims to generate an extremely high dividend yield. But what's interesting is that the performance of this fund is heavily tied to not only the underlying company that it tracks, but also the performance of Bitcoin, almost like a dividend Bitcoin ETF. So this is where things get really interesting. As we all know, Bitcoin has been trending in recent months, especially after the spot Bitcoin ETF approval, a company with the Bitcoin halving event that is taking place in April all of which are acting as major bullish catalysts pushing the price of Bitcoin higher every day. Now, for those who want to invest in cryptocurrencies, stay tuned because I will be making a video on Bitcoin and the best ETFs. But today I'll be focusing on whether CONY is an investment that you should consider, especially as an income investor or retiree that is solely focused on income generation or if it is simply a dividend trap. Now, I've already covered other yield max ETFs such as TSLY, which was very popular at the beginning of 2023. But this ETF is in a very interesting place because it essentially offers an alternative way to invest in Bitcoin, but also provides investors with a staggering dividend yield. And considering the Bitcoin bull run, the potential outperformance can be insane. Well, almost. So to begin, let's run through the fund's fundamentals so that you can get a better understanding of this ETF. This ETF was established in August of 2023, so it is extremely new and currently has almost $400 million of assets under management. Now, considering its recent inception date, this accumulation of assets is very impressive. The fund does have a very high expense ratio of around 1%, which is in line with every other ETF in the Yieldmax ETF portfolio. And just for reference, for every $10,000 invested, you pay $99 in annual fees. And as mentioned before, it has a dividend yield of just under 40%, which is distributed on a monthly basis. And the dividend yield is non-qualified, so it is subject to regular income tax, unless you are investing in a Roth IRA, where all gains and dividends are not subject to any taxation. Taking a look at its performance year to date with dividends distributed, the fund has returned 20%, which is fantastic. And since inception, the fund has returned over 115%. Now, of course, you can't compare this ETF to any other fund except Coinbase stock itself. And Coinbase has returned more than all of them combined at 46% year to date. That is a significant difference and nearly double the returns. Now, let's first get an understanding of how the CTF works and why its performance is so heavily correlated with the performance of not only Coinbase, but also Bitcoin itself. To begin, I have to say that CONY is just extremely lucky and it was established at almost the perfect time to capture the attention of investors. But specifically right now, it may be at a very critical point, strictly because of a series of underlying issues with Coinbase and a very simple rule that almost every cryptocurrency has followed to this date, which is buy the rumor and sell the news. So let me explain. So this ETF uses synthetic covered calls to harvest income from Coinbase volatility. But what is a synthetic covered call? Now, I have gone through this in my previous videos, but for those who haven't seen those yet, here's a brief explanation. So we all know what a covered call is. It is a strategy where an investor owns an underlying asset like a stock or an ETF and sells call options against it to generate premium. And ETFs that use this strategy are JEPI and JEPQ. And as I've said many times before, covered call ETFs help minimize portfolio volatility. But a synthetic covered call is when the investor creates a position using options that replicates the cash flow of a covered call without actually owning the underlying asset. So how does this work? Well, it's actually very simple. This ETF chooses a strike price, typically at the money, which means the current price that Coinbase is trading at, and it sells puts, but it also buys an equal number of calls at the same strike price. This then creates what is referred to as a synthetic long position. And these positions have the same time to expiration, which is usually between six months to a year. So when these option positions are coupled together, they replicate the price movements of owning shares of stock. And you can do this with any stock of your choosing, which is why Yieldmax is consistently pumping out new ETFs. So you may be wondering, well, why not just own the shares in the first place? And there's two key reasons. Now, I do wanna remind you guys that the platform that I use throughout this video for research and analysis is Seeking Alpha. And currently you can get $50 off their premium plan by using the link in the description down below. Now back to the video. For one, a synthetic long position requires a lot less capital. So it's cheaper to do a synthetic long position versus just buying stock. 
When you buy a call option and sell a put option at the same time, the premium that you receive from selling the put option cancels out the money you spend to buy the call option. So for example, if Coinbase stock sits at $250, instead of taking a long position and needing to pay $25,000 to buy 100 shares, you can take on a synthetic long position where you sell a put option at a strike price of $250 and receive, let's say, a $500 premium, and then you buy a call option at the strike price of $250 for the price of $500. So essentially, you pay no money. Now, the second reason is that a synthetic long position can provide more flexibility. So you can kind of play with the options depending on how you feel the stock might perform rather than just buying the stock and riding the wave. Moving on, so after the fund takes on a synthetic long position, now the fund sells covered calls against a majority of its synthetic long position, just like you would sell calls for a covered call strategy. This allows them to harvest the premium income and then distribute it to investors as a dividend yield. Now, as for the covered calls, the calls have an expiration of one month or less, in contrast to the synthetic option positions, which have six months to one year expiration. The covered calls also have a strike price that is approximately 5 to 15% out of the money, which means above the current Coinbase share price. This allows the fund to profit when Coinbase rises in value. Although there's one major detail that needs to be mentioned. The fund also owns treasuries, which are used as collateral for the options, which also generate income. And you can clearly see this when you look at the fund's holding breakdown. So now that you understand how the ETF works, let's get to the main question, which is, is this a good investment? So Coinbase has been skyrocketing in price since 2023, where it was trading at a low of $31 and has now reached a high of $271. That is almost nine times the returns in less than a year and a half. Now, for those who don't know, Coinbase is a cryptocurrency exchange platform that allows investors to buy, sell, and store various cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and many others. And we have personally been using Coinbase since 2017 before it became a public company. And the sole purpose was to invest in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, on a side note, I've been a bigger fan of Ethereum as opposed to Bitcoin. And I do want to mention that there is an Ethereum ETF in the works of being approved. So do keep a very close eye on that. So the biggest reason Coinbase has been skyrocketing is because of transaction revenues. As the prices of cryptocurrencies rise, traders will resort to Coinbase, which has caused their transaction revenue to rise a staggering 64% year over year, more than double their total transaction revenue from the third quarter of 2023. And this chart shows you how their transaction revenue has changed every quarter. And this is exactly in line with the rise and fall of prices in cryptocurrencies. In fact, right here is a full chart dating back to 2019 and showing the stock price of Coinbase. And you can see that it is exactly in line with the price changes in Bitcoin. Now, of course, the company has established other ways to boost revenue, such as subscription services and interest income on loans, as well as fees for stable coins. I'm happy to make a dedicated video on Coinbase and go through everything in detail. So let me know in the comment section down below if that is something you want. But here's my biggest issue. Ever since the Bitcoin ETF approval, more and more investors are flocking to these alternative investment avenues. I mean, the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF has accumulated over $13 billion of assets under management in less than three months. And my thinking is that as more of these ETFs get introduced, there's a chance that Coinbase transaction revenue could suffer quite a bit, taking a big toll on the company's overall revenue. And we currently only have the approval of a Bitcoin ETF. We haven't even discussed the approval of the Ethereum ETF, which is the second most popular cryptocurrency. So if you factor this in, then Coinbase could be subject to major earnings and revenue decline as more and more avenues become available for investors to put their money into crypto. When you look at the company's revenue since it went public in 2019, when Bitcoin hit all-time highs in 2021, Coinbase had such a strong quarter of net revenue hitting $2.5 billion. But now, given that Bitcoin has reached all-time highs again, along with many other popular cryptocurrencies, its fourth quarter earnings revenue in 2023 has not even hit $1 billion yet. So now you have a company that is heavily influenced by the price fluctuations of cryptocurrencies and is negatively impacted by cryptocurrency ETFs that are constantly growing in popularity which is a major problem for CONY. So now circling back to CONY, the performance of CONY will be negatively impacted if the price of cryptocurrencies collapse, 
but also if new crypto ETFs get approved because the transaction revenues from Coinbase will plummet. And this is a major problem moving forward. This ETF is subject to a lot of volatility, and I've said this many times before, but a covered call strategy on an asset that can have price swings from 50 to 100% to the upside and 50 to 100% to the downside is never going to be a good investment instrument. And that is simply because a covered call strategy is limiting the upside potential, but leaving the downside completely open and vulnerable. So you have to ask yourself, do you want to limit your upside to only 15 or even 20%, but expose your downside to the full extent of 50% or even 100%? I'm thinking, absolutely not. And this is why I think that CONY was simply in the right place at the right time. Because for example, had it been established in the beginning of 2022, the fund's net asset value would have plummeted so much that it would have collapsed. When you look at the price returns of Coinbase, because of its covered call strategy on CONY, all of these major swings to the upside, like in August of 2022 of almost 100%, or the beginning of 2023 and June of 2023, which were both around 100%, CONY would only have captured a fraction of it. But the subsequent collapse from those highs would have been fully reflected in the ETF's returns. We even saw this happen at the beginning of the year where Coinbase stock plummeted 32% in one month, but then skyrocketed 116%. And CONY captured the entire drawdown the first month, falling 26%, but then only appreciating by 61%. So eventually, Yieldmax will likely do a reverse stock split, just like they did with TSLY, to give investors the illusion that the price of their stock is still relatively stable. And we'll talk about the reverse stock split on TSLY very soon. So that is why this ETF is not only a dividend trap, but also just a very risky asset in general. The underlying price of the CTF is heavily influenced by Coinbase and its quarterly revenue results, which could take a hit. And also the price swings of Bitcoin itself, which is already subject to insane levels of volatility. Also keep in mind that Bitcoin is highly reflective of current market conditions. So as the markets hit record highs, so does Bitcoin. And as we've entered the bear market in 2022, so did Bitcoin. So right now, as we sit at record highs, you have to consider the possibility of a reversal or a correction, which will directly impact CONY. For those who want exposure to Bitcoin or Coinbase itself, simply investing in the company or Bitcoin through the many ETFs that are now available is a much better avenue because you want to make sure that you're able to capture the major upward price swings. But probably the number one thing I've always stuck with is that with any any investment in Bitcoin, pretend like it was never even there. Now, for those who want to know whether Bitcoin is still a buy or whether we should be preparing for a reversal, well, here's my take. Buy the rumor, sell the news. This is something that has been very common amongst cryptocurrencies, and we actually saw it when the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF was approved. You have to ask yourself why the price of Bitcoin plummeted almost 20% when the ETF was approved. So all investors should be extremely careful. And if you're buying in right now, just try to completely ignore all the price fluctuations and stick with it, even through the upcoming halving event. Now, there are many platforms that you can use to determine whether Bitcoin is overbought, like this one right here, which is the Bitcoin rainbow chart, which I find really useful, but also using the 21 weekly exponential moving average, which is a trend line that has been very effective for all cryptocurrency investors. But I will leave this for my next video. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.